Hello everyone and welcome back to another Shop Critique. Today I'm really really excited because I am critiquing Avaline Keepsakes um, which is Charlotte's shop and let's get straight into it. So I am lo losing my voice again, I'm not quite sure what's going on but um, I'll try and power through. I have a glass of water here so if you hear me take sips apologies on that if you're squeamish when it comes to like really intense drinking sounds <laughs> basically it i think it's what's going to have to happen to keep me going so apologies for that so we are going to get right into it and i always start at the top and work my way down so we're going to start with your logo and your banner up here now I do, I, I really genuinely like this logo and in the questionnaire uh, that I sent you, Charlotte, um, you did say that you've made this yourself and I really, really have to say that's an amazing logo, so well, well done. The only thing I would say is that me sitting back, uh, right back in my chair, I can't read that text. So my advice to you would be maybe put that in bold or maybe pick a slightly bolder font just so... The name is what my eye is drawn to immediately and not the flowers above here. <clears throat> what I'm going to do ever so quickly is I'm just going to go over to your social medias, which I've preloaded, and just make sure, yep, so you're being consistent there. And you're being consistent there. Also, as well, I love the fact that you're using it to uh, do your graphics as well. So fantastic job on the branding. Now, you've got this lovely uh, floral bit here, which I do like. However, this has got to be the sign above your door. So, basically, this is really, it's completely up to you, the sort of thing that you would like uh, above your door. Lots of people put product pictures in there, which I don't recommend, because naturally, if you had a sign above your door, it wouldn't have product pictures in it. But what I would 100% say is at least somewhere maybe put your name or your logo here or something like that. Um, maybe have your um, socials here, something like that. Have a look. And what I've done is that I've preloaded some shots that we think are your competition. And we're going to have a little look and we're going to see what sorts of things they do. So these guys don't have a banner, so that's uh, that's not helpful, nor do these guys. <laughs> They're not gonna have a banner now, are they? No, okay, never mind. But going back to your shop, I do, I do feel like maybe have a little look at some other shops and just see what they're doing. Um, I can also see that you're not using the Etsy Plus layout. Now, I do, sorry, I'm just gonna have, have a little sip of water. I do always um, recommend that if you're an established shop and you have lovely product photos, which all in all, I've just taken a look and you do, I would 100% using the Etsy Plus layout. Now, what that means is that you have the five photo layout, so you have, I'm gonna try and sort of trace it on the screen. You have one big picture here, and then you have a couple of smaller pictures here. In fact, what I'm gonna do uh, is I am going to go on to my Etsy shop and show you. I just think that would be a lot easier. So, as you can see, you get the uh, scrolly, uh, what's it called? Uh, slideshow, that's the word. I always uh, forget that word. Slideshow here. <clears throat> and you have the big photo here and the four smaller ones here. I just think it introduces people to your brand straight off the bat. So, immediately you scroll down rather than sort of doing this where it's like boom that's it straight into products here it's, li it's li a little bit more like okay okay so it's a, a uh, well to be honest that's the first one they see okay so they do engraved bits and okay all like brides bridesmaids and daughters and mothers and okay yeah that's that's fab then they look at this and go oh they're based near me okay fabulous fabulous these are nice, yeah, these are nice. And then it goes into the product. So if I hope that makes some kind of sense. Now, um, I know Etsy Plus, now I don't remember off the top of my head how much it is. I think it's nine. Now I'm gonna have to go and look now because this is bugging me. Uh, Etsy Plus subscription packages. Take your time to load, love. Okay. 
So, hang on, let me find the price first. It doesn't have the price, does it? Uh, let's have another little look. Okay, well, let's go on there and let's have a look and see. I wish I'd loaded this up before now. No. Okay, when I last looked, these two benefits here, so the 15 li listing credits and the $5 uh, promoted listing uh, credit, that actually made it, um, it actually made it, I think, something ridiculous, like three to five dollars every month, which in pounds is about four four pounds. If you say between three to four pounds, so <clears throat> I know you might be paying. I have a feeling it's nine ninety five dollars a month. I have a feeling. Don't quote me. But what I would say is that these two benefits obviously kind of offset it a little bit. So you're only actually paying a really reduced amount now. You do get other uh, bits and bobs as well, so you get restock requests, which I have seen, I have stalked your Instagram, and you do Christmas market nights. Now, I do think that this might be quite a good feature, especially if you're doing restock nights and things like that. Having restock requests kind of um, enables you to see what products are gonna be popular, if that, if that makes sense. Um, so this is what I spoke about, the advanced shop customization. Uh, discounts and perks. I don't personally use this myself. Um, I did go on to this Moo discount, but to be honest with you, I go to Vistaprint and I found this literally double the price. But Moo do have some amazing business cards. They, they do round one, square one. So honestly, um, you have a look and you and you sort of evaluate um, how it would work for your shop. Um, this is new as well. I don't think this was in when I first, because I, I did it Etsy Plus when it first came out. So have a good look. You can access it through your, um, in fact, I'm gonna click that link. I'm gonna see if it shows me that damn price. This is bugging me like you wouldn't believe. Hang on, here we go. Ooh, oh no, it doesn't tell you. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, um, no, it doesn't tell me. It does not, your subscription. Oh, fantastic, I found it. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so it's £7.90 a month. Now, if you get, hang on, I'm gonna work this out. So if you get £7.90, it's, it's about, so 20 cents works out about 16p. Um, so let's do five times 16. So you get 80, 80p um, and you get five dollars, which is about four. So you get about four pound 80 worth of goodies um, that you would probably use anyway. So four pound 80. So it's really only costing you three pounds and 10p. That's a very rough, well, you've, you've just seen how I've just worked, worked that out. So I would, 100% recommend you do that. Uh, obviously it's plus VAT as well. This Etsy Premium is exciting because, now I know Charlotte that your, your, your goal, your dream if you like for your shop is to go full time. And you know what? I a thousand percent believe that you can. I, ha I have been on your shop uh, before pressing record and I love your products. And I think with a few tweaks here and there, and it will be a learning curve, you know, don't think it's gonna happen over, overnight, but I think if you really put in the time and the effort to learn, that you can go full time. And what I've heard about this here is that, I'm gonna click remind me, there we go, is that, now th this has been pu pushed back, it was supposed to be coming, I think, January, and then, then they pushed it back, and now it just says coming 2019. But um, basically, you can customize your shop more. And when it says advanced management tools, now I, yes, so it does actually say that here. It does say that here. It didn't say that before. So basically what I'm hoping and I'm praying is that they enable people to have other logins for uh, virtual assistants and things like that. Let me tell you, 
as a full-time Etsy seller, that, that would change the game. Because at the minute, with all of this IP address and shops getting shut down and all that type of thing, I'm deathly frightened, <laughs> essentially, to let someone log into my shop um, from their home computer. So if they enable that, and this is something for you to aim for, Charlotte, is that we can then go to VAs and things like that and get them to do all the busy work on our shop that us as creatives don't necessarily enjoy, let's be honest, or have time for. And also as well, I believe we might be getting um, faster responses and maybe even a live chat. So that's my quick, ever so quick rundown. We're already 10 minutes in and we haven't even got into the shop critique yet, but I hope that that kind of gives you some insight as to Etsy has your back when it comes to you going full time. And going back to your shop with the Etsy Plus, I do genuinely think I, I feel like with your shop, you need to have a stronger brand. So you need to know, you have to have a brand profile, I feel like. And obviously with my uh, 30 days to a kick butt Etsy shop, uh, which I will link below as always, we do ever so slightly walk through this. So with a brand profile, and I am happy to do a video at this at some point. I'm not a branding expert by any means, but I've read lots and lots of books and things like that. And the overall upshot of it is, is that you have to pick two to three colors that describe your brand. So I would say this sort of creamy color, uh, purple and pink are the colors that stand out to me. Um, so obviously when you're doing social media or those types of things make sure that you use those colors because you want to every social media you post everything that you put online in regards to your business you want it to build your brand so you want it to add value to your brand and do you know what i'm going to show you one that does this really really well now we all know pandora we all know pandora but I want to, I know it's not, it's not your, um, your uh, type of products and I understand that. However, I want to kind of go through with you how every post that Pandora puts up adds to their brand. So as you know, this is the Pandora logo. They have a sort of very blush peachy um, sort of pink here, if that makes sense. Like very, can't think how to describe it. Like a peach, I, I, I'd say peach. So basically you have this lovely peach color here and essentially every post does add to the branding. See, I love this picture here where they're putting the jewelry on each other and they're wearing all the, all the jewelry, all the things and, and this one as well and this one, I love that one as well. But you can see what I mean. Every single post, they always have this, this, um, peachy blushy pink see here it's more pink there it's more peachy I'm not sure if that's just my eyes but anyway so every single um, post adds to their brand but they're consistent they know what colors work well they always include some peachy pinky blush in every single one of their photos um, so I hope that sort of runs through with you what I mean by build building a brand I don't want you to think of your Etsy shop is just an Etsy shop. I want you to think of your uh, Etsy shop as a business. You are a business owner. This is your brand, okay? So I hope that makes sense. So I'm just gonna go and have a little look at how many items you have. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through your name and your tagline first. Hang on a minute. I am getting ahead of myself. So Avaline Keepsakes love the name you've told me why you've named it that and i love i love that and i think you explain in your um about section so i won't ruin it for those who are watching <laughs> you are in sedgley in england 269 sales that's fantastic well done i'm so proud of you um since 2017 and 39 positive feedback i am going to go on that and open that up in a separate tab personalized box frames gifts and nursery and nursery and home decor. And so this is what Etsy sort of describes as your tagline. Now, I don't think they actually call it that anymore. I'm not sure what they call it now. I'm just gonna have a little sip of water. But this is very SEO heavy. Um, I find that when I change this, my 
different products in my shop sell. So for example, if I have a Christmas jewelry line that comes out, so it's engraved with Christmas trees and holly and all that sort of stuff, and I change this to personalized, uh, I can't think what I put now, I think it's Christmas jewelry or Christmas jewelry gifts or stocking fillers or something like that. And you absolutely should be changing this season by season. I find that more people come into my shop and buy the Christmas items. So it must be that when people are typing into Google personalized Christmas jewelry or personalized boxed box, bleh, personalized box frames, that is it's drawing that crowd into your shop. So I would experiment with this, definitely. Um, I would 110% uh, research on Google. Now you can go on to things like Google Keyword Planner, uh, but I'm gonna show you Etsy Rank later on. But this sort of gives you a really good idea. Um, so why isn't it worked? <sighs> Honestly. Okay, well I think you have to sign in first, but essentially you type in, let's say for summer apparel and it comes in with all of these different keywords. So yeah, I, I would just have a little play, but essentially you want to make a tagline that's really keyword uh, heavy, that accurately describes the feel and the types of products that you sell from your shop and from your brand. So now we're gonna go into how many products you have. So, 115 products, fantastic. So, I, I am of the school of thought. Now I know that a lot of different uh, Etsy gurus and things like that, they always disagree, all that type of thing. I am a strong believer that the more products you have, the better chance you will get found. And I have found this for my own shop because at the end of the, of the day, I know that there are, um, SEO people out there that say, you know, if you're doing SEO correctly and perfectly, that you could have one product and be found and get sales, or 10 or 50, but we're all learning. And the fact of it is, is that let's look at the facts. Etsy changes their search algorithm all the time. So for you to get perfect SEO, you have to be literally on, on the ball and reading what Etsy puts out. And, and to be honest, they don't even put out that much when, it talk, when it, they talk about their SEO. So really, I would 100% recommend just putting more products in your shop. Now, I'm not saying you have to spend the next you know, year of, of your life just continuously making products. Well, but what I am saying is that you can uh, you can bundle. So for example, uh, you could bundle these three together and make like a, um, a Christmas Eve treats board bundle kit or something like that. So if parents have three children or two children, they can, they can get two and have a very slight discount. That means you have an extra listing that you can keyword differently. And I'll show you Etsy rank later on. And essentially, um, have a different li different listing and that sort of adds to your uh, overall number up here. So I hope that makes sense. Um, gift sets, bundles, different colors, different variations are all the little things you can tweak. So for example, you can make this in like with the background being uh, blue or pink or something like that. The same with this. You could even bundle, you, you could bundle that and that and have like a, uh, uh, new room decoration kit or something like that designed for when um, kids reach that age where they don't want nursery stuff anymore but they want to have the cool pink and purple bedroom. Was it just me when I was about nine my mum and dad decorated my bedroom purple and pink and I literally thought I was the coolest kid in school because my bedroom my entire bedroom was half purple and half pink so fantastic <laughs> anyway. Um, but basically, you could, you know, you could you could package that as a as a bedroom decorating kit or something like that. Also, I mean, I do go into um, other product ideas later on in the critique, so I won't spoil that too much. But all I'm going to say is kits, DIY kits. That's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, watch until the end, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. So. Basically, you don't have to carry on making things and all that sort of thing. You know, even, even with this, if you took the names off of them here, you could make a, uh, I'm not quite sh 
sure what they're made out of. I believe they're wooden. Um, but you can make like a garland just with these letters. So you could spell Ruby out with a big pink R, big pink U, big pink B, all that type of thing. Um, let's have a wee look, see. Okay. I think you might have to have some stronger, um, some stronger twine or string or something like that. But I, obviously I am not an expert, you are the expert. But don't think you have to come up with new ideas all the time. These, can I, can I, I just say, right, just, just very quickly off the bat, and I'm not gonna take this out of your time for your shop critique, don't worry, because I know I blab. But I really, really love this. My, uh, we're moving shortly, well, we're moving in about a week's time. And well, uh, depending on when this goes up, but basically mid July, we're moving and my new office, and I know it's probably like an outdated trend, but I really want it all rose gold and cream. And I saw this and I was, I was excited. I thought, oh my goodness, yes. I love, I love this so much. In fact, I'm going to like favour that because I'm probably going to end up coming back and buying that. But if you did one without a name on, just saying like with the swash and all that type of thing, saying boss lady or messy bun getting stuff done, something like that, you know, put different sayings and things on it. And then, you know, you could even do teacher gifts, things like that. Um, yeah, I just really think you could come up with such such a diverse product offering when it comes to little things like that and like this and you could make so many different listings and then if you had so for example if you had one with says uh mrs smith as like a teacher gift so like a little plaque that a teacher would put on their desk you could keyword that as teacher graduation gift uh end of year gift teacher gift uh end of term present all those types of things and you're bringing that traffic to your shop so i hope that makes sense i hope i haven't blabbed um if you have any questions charlotte please give me a message or please put them in the des uh, description box put them in the comment box below so with your um categories i think you're doing okay with these um new baby gifts these are very SEO heavy as well. So as well as this little tagline uh, line up here, these are all very SEO heavy as well. I'm just gonna double check, make sure I'm still going. Yes, I am. Sometimes it randomly stops on me and it's very agitating. So, let's pop that down. So, just make sure that rather than maybe putting um, nursery de decor, um, well, you could probably keep that as it is, but maybe maybe this is a, b a better exa example. Gifts for him, gifts for her, new baby gifts, family, well, gifts, maybe. Something something like that, um, um, mem memoriam keepsakes. Go on to Etsy and have a look at the type of keywords that people are searching for, because that will bring you in. And I must say, I, it's strange. I... I do get a lot of uh, traffic from my shop categories, so I don't know whether or not when uh, when you get deep, deep, deep into trying to search for something, Etsy comes up with your ca categories or something like that. It's dead strange, and um, I don't know if the search results are going on a bit of a wonk at the minute or so something like that, but I do get some very strange search results back. But in essence, just make sure that you keyword these little bits here. So going back to your number of items, so once you've made all of these like extra little listings and bun bundles and gift sets, don't publish them to your shop straight away. I always say uh, between 20 to 50 listings is what I do every single month. So I'll spend literally two to three days doing what I've told, told you, doing what I've said and packaging them, bundling them. Sit, literally sit there looking at my products in front of me and I'll rack my brains and think right how can I how can I repackage this repurpose this rather than as well because who has the money to keep going out and buying supplies every five minutes um I like to repurpose things and if if there's a style that isn't selling very well in my shop I, I won't just throw it in land in landfill because that's just a waste I'll look at it and I'll think, okay, so was it the actual necklace or was it how it was presented? Was it this little bit that I've put on here? Can I take that off? Can I 
solder something else onto here and you know i'll think of other ways to repackage things and i think once you do that and especially in in my shop i spend probably two to three days a month doing that because let's be honest not all of our products sell all the time now i'm sure there's probably maybe five to 20 products that sell for you all the time and the rest of them just sort of sit there and that could be seo it could be pictures it could be a lot of things but at the end of the day you can't dwell on them too much and what I would recommend is once a month at least, having a good look through your shop. So for example, these sale clearance bits here, I imagine are probably the things that you're thinking, oh, I could do with getting rid of. You know, I'd be looking at these and I'd be thinking, what else can I do here? I could, I, I could, probably, I could probably take these little beads out and I could probably put feathers in or something like that. Or I could probably do a memorial bauble or something like that. Or do you know what I mean? Just really think about things. And then that creates an extra listing that you can add to your total number here. But anyway, so with these 20 to 50 listings that I make every single month, I always put them in my drafts section. And what I do is because Etsy is very heavily they like recency at the minute. Um, I don't know if it's a trend that's going to continue, probably, but they want people that are working in their shop all the time, that are interested in their shops all the time, that they can see that they're very active in their shops. So unfortunately, there's a lot of Etsy shops that pop up, list 10 products, make five sales, and they don't log back into their shop ever again. And I think, to be honest, that's the type of shop that Etsy are trying to discourage. Um, I do feel like they are heavily leaning towards those who are putting effort in their shop and they do reward those who put effort in, the, in into their shop. And I don't care what anyone says. The day that I went full time with my shop and I was, oh Christ, I was literally in there every single day and working on things, changing things, tweaking things, adding new products. The day I started doing that, and I and I, it's almost a spike. It's really, it's dead strange. The day I did that, I saw an immediate, an immediate spike in my views, visits, sales, things like that. So, I, I honestly think Etsy are trying to reward those who uh, put more effort into their shops. Sorry, Charlotte. I just had to pause ever so quickly there. Sorry about that. So, yes. Yeah, so, with your drip feeding your listings. Um, where what I think where I got to was the 20 to 50 listings every single month um, and then what I do is that I publish one listing every day or every other day and what that shows is that especially if this is a side hustle as well which you have said that it is um, that with very minimal effort you can batch create listings and things like that and then essentially every single day you can publish one or go and go into your Etsy app or something like that and do that. So basically it just shows that to Etsy you are active in your shop most days, even when you're not necessarily actively in there, i.e. sat on your desktop or your laptop working on your shop. That's the, 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 the tactic, tactic that I've sort of used over the years and I found that it has worked wonders for my shop. The only downside with that is that you do end up with, uh, the end of last year, I had 1,600 listings in my shop because I was doing this. Um, and what I didn't do, and that was over the course of three years, and what I didn't do is I didn't go through and sort out the, the dead weight. If, and like I just said to you, that you can repackage those, repurpose those, things like that. So definitely that's something to think about for your shop. Now, I am going to go on to your reviews. So I'm just gonna have a little gander at your reviews. Okay, so um, so you've got a one star, and do you know what? With the amount of, the, of months that you've been on Etsy, you know, that's to be expected. And at Christmas time as well, don't worry too much about it. My thoughts are, is that, as long as you learn from them. So if it was genuinely something that you did wrong, that's fine. Just learn from them. Just make sure that, you know, you've got all five, five stars, you know, don't, you are going to get negative reviews or like two to three star reviews or even a one star review at some point. So don't worry too much about that. Oh, these are cute. I like those. So 
yeah, I would, I would, yeah, you've only got one. Honestly, it's going to happen. The bigger that you get, it's going to happen. I remember, I remember when I first got mine and um, yeah, I, I panicked so, so much. So my only thing would be to uh, make sure that you learn from them. Uh, let's have a little quick. So, I mean, personally, I would respond to this. Um, it's completely up to you. Don't, don't think what I'm saying is the thing to do. But if this was my shot, I would respond to it. And I was le it was leading on to my next point, which was make sure that when you respond, you respond in a very, very good way. Um, I've been on to other shots before as a shopper, and I've seen something like this. And I thought, just have a quick, you know, read. Um, it wouldn't put me off as a buyer because let's be honest, things happen. Um, Royal Mail can sometimes, or whichever postal carrier that you use can sometimes lose things. Um, it's not your fault. And then obviously the only person that the customer has to vent to is you, i.e. the shop. So don't feel too discouraged when it comes to this sort of thing. However, um, I would respond and just make sure that you'd respond in a way that the first thing you say is, hi, thank you for your feedback. Like don't, don't go in there with, you know, sort of thing. Um, read it, uh, sorry, write it read it, read it again, sleep on it, come back to it in the morning, and if you think that's the right thing to post, then you can post it. I don't think you can edit it once it's posted, so definitely make sure, you know. Um, so yeah, I would just make sure that you tell uh, customers maybe your side of the story, if there is one. Um, definitely, it's a really, I really like the fact that Etsy allows you to respond, because it, it honestly, the amount of customers that just blame the shops for postal mistakes and things like that, it is very, very high. Um, and especially when you're a shop that this is the first one star that you've got, you often are sat there thinking, well, this, this, this isn't fair. Why have I got to deal with this? You know, um, unfortunately, that's just the joys of e-commerce. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine. It doesn't happen very often. But the more sales you get, obviously, the more higher chances it is of happening to you. So just make sure that you respond in a very diplomatic way. Um, pretend like you're talking to a friend um, and just sort of, yeah, don't don't F and blind at the customer, which I, <laughs> you'd be surprised. I've seen a shop that has done this before and I, I, I haven't been in, in their shop since, but I was sat there and I was reading it and I was thinking, how is this shop still going? Because at the end of the day, that's public. The customer could screenshot that, post it all over social media, and you're done for. You know, let's be let, let's be real here. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't mean to scare you. That that sounded a heck of a lot worse than it is. But basically, just make sure that reviews have to be fair. And I believe that you know the customer has given um, their side here, and I think it's only fair that you should give yours because at the end of the day, there are two sides to every single story, good or bad. So. Yeah, that's my two cents about that. But overall, your feedback is amazing, and it's uh, five stars overall in your shop. So don't don't be, don't be you know so so het up about it. So where am I going to now? I'm going back to your main shop. So going back to your branding, target market. You have a lot of varying products in your shop, and I think this could be. Maybe this could be what is letting you down in some aspects. I'm not saying it, you know, that your shop is bad or anything like that. Absolutely not. But maybe this is this this could be what is slightly holding you back, if that makes sense. And I say this with love. Don't think I'm saying that your shop is bad or anything like that, because absolutely not. It's beautiful. But this is your target market. And your target market is like if you're building a house, it's the foundation that that house sits on. So if you've got a bit of a wobbly foundation, it's got a couple of holes here and there, and you're not quite sure how you did it in the first place, then the products that you build on top of that, or the brand, if you like, in the shop, and the products that you build on top of that foundation will be a little bit unstable, and you won't, you know, you won't know what, what products to make next, or how to sound on social media, and all those types of things. So, when it comes to a target market, I can absolutely do a video on this at a later point, but 
And it's also as well, just a quick off, off note, um, it's in my 30 days to a kick butt Etsy shop workbook as well. It, it does touch upon that, but you, you can go as deep or as, or as shallow, is that, is that the word, with this as you like, because this is your target market. It's completely up to you how deep you go with this. You know, I've got a target market profile that I, I worked for about a month on, to be fair. And it, I've, I've got so deep with it that I think I just got a little bit obsessed with it. So don't go so deep, you know, as to know their hair colour and their eye colour. <laughs> but you definitely want to sort of know, you know, are they male or female? Uh, what sort of jobs do they have? Um, what do they like to do for fun? Uh, what shops do they shop in? Uh, yeah, all that type of thing. And how I how I do that is that before. So obviously, I've opened up a good few uh, Shopify stores, Etsy stores, things like that. Before I even even think about a name of for the shop or the brand, I I immediately have an idea in my head of what I want to do. And what I do is that I think to myself, okay. I want to go into some similar shops or similar brands. So for you, I know uh, we did look at these brands here, and I will absolutely look at those at a, uh, in a, in a, in a bit. <laughs> um, but I'm going to get rid of that because that's in the way. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that also because that is in the way. But I would make sure that, especially when you're out shopping and things like that in malls and shopping centres on on the high street really keep your eye open and think okay what shops would be ideal um, when it when it came to putting my products either in their sh store or uh, stores that have a similar target market to me if you've done markets and craft fairs and things like that as well this will be quite easy for you because you can physically look at the type of people that come over to your to your store um, online it can be tricky but a fantastic way to do this is to go back through your reviews, um, go through your social media followers, and just really get a good feel and, you know, stalk them a, a, a little bit, you know, really sort of have a look and see what type of people are they, you know. Um, yeah, it's 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 a funny thing. You, you kind of have to act like a, de a detective, really, um, especially if, like you, you've started your brand and now you're just revisiting going back and doing your target market. Lots of people say it's really, really hard to do this. I personally don't think it is. I think it's easier because you already have a, like a uh, portfolio of customers, if you like. So especially um, the, the first place I would start off with is going on profiles, things like that. So click on her, click on her and see, uh, you know, what other things she favours on her Etsy account and really just spend a good, I would say a good couple of hours stalking your customers and essentially getting a feel for who they are. Make notes of anything that you find. So for example, uh, if you find that they're women and they're aged, let's say 20 to 35, uh, first time buyers, maybe, um, they like to shop at New Look for clothes, maybe, um, and perhaps they like to go to Primark um, but when it comes to the home decoration front, maybe they like um, da, 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 John Lewis. You know, I spot John wrong, but you, there we go. You get what I mean. So you end up building up this massive list of all these things that your target market is. And I tell you, it's dead useful when it comes to your social media because you immediately know, okay, I am, I am typing my descriptions, I'm taking my photographs, I'm, you know, I'm posting this on social media for this type of person. And you might find in your shop, like mine, that you have two or three target mar markets for different, like, uh, genres of products, if that makes sense. So these, these products here might be for mums and dads to buy their kids. Uh, this, well, for me, this was for a self-employed office professional, if that, if that makes sense. These are for kids, or uh, for, for parents, because let's be honest, it's the parents that are buying this. Um, this is for a 30-year-old or a friend of someone who's turning 30. You've got quite a variation of um, products in your shop. Now, I understand what you were saying about you want to be, you know, you want to um, 
follow in the in the footsteps if you like and really go full time with it and i understand that completely but if i go into this shop just as, a, as an example now th this is one that we found um was a uh someone who was similar niche of products to you now looking at the shop straight off the bat i think this is very much catered to nursery decor children's rooms things like that um might not be because she's got gift for dad here but children's decor she's got 20 for the rest she's got a minimal amount um, and also her colors are very much sort of uh, catered to that sort of thing so this is a fantastic way as well so she's obviously really thinking okay so my children's decor is sold really really well i'm gonna make more and thus she has um let's have a look here they've got 38 items um, probably not a good one maybe to compare to you because I, I yeah I do really feel like um, it's definitely children's rooms decor and things like that uh, let's have a look here da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. nursery decor again it's very nursery decor orientated things like that so yeah definitely would a hundred percent recommend Oh, hang on, where are you? There you are. Just really narrowing down your target market because I do feel like you're sort of, you know, you're, you might be a little bit scattered and I understand how difficult it can be at times to really, you know, niche down. But as they say, if you're trying to reach everybody, you're not gonna reach anybody. So take a step back, take a few days to think about it and sort of think, okay, long term, you know, thinking ahead, five years i want to go full time with this okay fa fantastic so what do you imagine going full time with do you imagine being a beautiful pastel uh so like this shop here no not that's that's not a shop there we go here beautiful pastel nursery decor kit for millennials that are having babies in the next two or three years if that makes sense or or have had a, ba a baby and that child is turning one or two or something like that or birthday party presents or something like that or even um baby shower presents and things are you doing that or oh for goodness sake that tab is just getting in my way or are you doing teacher gifts are you doing um smart office gifts are you doing uh christmas things you know obviously you can add christmas things in there uh, especially if you're doing if your target market is children or parents of children um but i hope you can see what i mean um yeah that that's all i sort of have to say on that just make sure that you really accurately go in and do a little bit of stalking um, go into some physical shops that you think your target market would go in and sit there or stand there and just really make a note of who is going in that shop what products they're looking at what shopping bags they already have in their hands all those types of things and I, I hope that makes sense if you have any issues or products or anything like that issues or products issues or questions uh, please let me know pictures images let's have a little look see so i'm going to type i'm going to pick something I'm going to pick something, pick something, pick something. There's so much to pick from. Uh, I'm going to type in wooden name plaque. Actually, I'm going to go into. So I'm going to. I'm going to take this product because I think that's really sweet. I I do like like that. That does stand out to me. Um, on plaque floor decker. So. Is that wooden? Yeah. So see, just, just quickly with your SEO, if I was searching for that, I would be typing in wooden name plaque. Um, this is the joys of, S, of S, S, SEO. I will uh, go, go into that for you. See, so I've just typed in wooden name plaque, 4,810 results, but exactly you know what you've had here. I will go into SEO in a second, don't worry right now we're looking at your pictures now i i'm going to just sort of scroll through as if i was shopping and i'm going to tell you as i'm scrolling what stands out to me so i've just typed in no you can go away thank you i've just typed in wooden name plaque and these don't stand out to me 
something? Not really. No, no. Yes. Oh, definitely, definitely this. Definitely that stands out to me. Um, that my eye is drawn to. I, I do quite like that, actually. I, I do quite like that. I'm not going to lie. That definitely stands out to me. No, 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 no. I'm not looking at the shop names, by the way. I'm just literally just doing a little scroll. That I quite like. I quite like the picture. I think that's really nice. That I see. I can't even see what that what that is. Okay, so um, just avoid this mistake where you know you want to do a nice styled shoot, but you end up sort of oh. Do you know, that attracts me, but the only reason probably is that my dog is called Phoebe, but I do like that. That that picture is lovely, and that stands out to me too. Could be, could do with being zoomed in a tad, but that stands out to me. So I hope you're getting quite a good idea of what's standing out to me and what's not. That is because of the floral aspect of things. Um, let's go to the next. Let's go to the next. That stands out to me. Mm, relatively, relatively. Um, do, 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 do. This is the bit I love about shop, shop critics because I can essentially shop and I'm allowed to shop. <laughs> that, I mean, if that text was darker, that picture would stand out to me. Do, do, do. Let's just go on to one more page and then I think you've probably got the gist. That stands out to me. Definitely. That could do being zoomed in to sort of that maybe. Um, mm -hmm. That's cute. I like that. Wish the background was a bit brighter, but yeah, that 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 stands out to me. Uh, that stands out to me. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Okay, so I think you kind of get an idea of what I mean. So let's just go back to page, is it one where I saw a couple that really stood out to me? Here we go. So for example, this. Now I'm gonna open that in a new tab because I think that's one of the best pictures to be honest. Um, see, it's a bestseller and I bet you any money you like that's because of their picture. So, um, Definitely keep your pictures bright. Now I know that, you know, some of your pictures are bright, but see that could be lightened up, that could be lightened up, that could be lightened up. You know, you look at these pictures, I don't know if you've, if you've taken these or I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really sure, but you know, if, you've, if, you've, if you could lighten these up, um, lighten those up. If you've got Photoshop, fantastic. If you haven't, go on to, Pick, pick monkey or eye picky um, really fantastic lighten that up for definite for definite I don't think you actually need much photography work apart from I, I don't like these side sideways pictures because it's you know f for me like I'm sat here now physically tilting my head um, just make sure it's in a way like this like that you can accurately ac ac accurately I can't speak today see what it, what it is I really feel like this here, just as an example, if you lighten this up, if it honestly, if you lighten that up, attack, well, quite, quite a bit, that picture, this would be amazing and this would end up getting a lot more views because it's a beautiful piece. I think it's a picture that's letting it down. So try it, try it, by, by all means, copy, copy this list listing and um, lighten the picture up or upload a lighter picture. Don't touch anything else, just so you can see if it's a picture and see whether it brings more, pe more people in on that listing as opposed to this one. Um, yeah, definitely. So I think, I don't think, I mean, apart from these side sideways ones, I, I know why you're doing it, but I think that could be like a second or third picture deal. Um, I like that. Um, I think that, I think I actually clicked on, I think that one was one, one of the ones that I found on the, uh, on the feed just now, actually, but I do love that. I do really, really love that. I think if it, if it got lightened up a tad, it would be fantastic. Now, the only other thing I'd say about your pictures is that you've got a lot of, uh, this with the background of, of this wall, which I think does go really, really well with your rustic kind of thing. However, you then have... 
um, like this, um, or uh, this, or these, or and it's quite a mishmash of um, photography styles. I understand that sometimes it can be really, really hard to, to with the with the type of products that you have, whether they hang or sit on the, on the uh, wall or a shelf or something like that, it can be quite hard. But I would just make sure that your product photography style is always the same. Now, uh, again, that does build up to your brand. So basically, when I'm scrolling through this feed. I want to immediately know that that is your pictures. So I bet if I was to go onto this shop here, a lot of their pictures would be similar to this one. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so do you see what I mean? They've got some foliage in the background being held, all very natural wood. You know, this shop is definitely something that attracts me um, with the pictures and all the things like that but they've developed the photography style um, which stands out when you're scrolling through the feed here so I look at that and go oh yes that's that shop I remember that shop I like that shop so I think you could honestly do the same for your shop now I'm not saying you have to go through and retake all of your photographs definitely not I'm just gonna make sure I'm still going yet yeah. definitely not because that will take so so long Basically, the upshot of it is, is that you need to make sure that they're clear, uh, that the background isn't distracting, that they accurately show what the item is, that they're bright, um, that it shows the relative size, and also as well that it, it shows a good use of, of the product. So this, for example, you know, obviously it's hang, hanging up on the wall, but sometimes it can be quite difficult um, with things like that to you know maybe you could put a glass on it or something or a carrot or something like that this could maybe go on a desk or something like that just really sort of make sure that yeah it's it's um, it's sort of done in a way that would accurately show what the item is and attract that buyer all within the space of this little tiny box here and especially if you're shopping on mobile as well it's very small, it's very hard to get people's attention. And it, it is hard, because some people would be attracted to, to the same bright pictures that I am, and some people might not be. So again, this is where your target market comes in. I think I've spoken enough about uh, images now. I think you probably get the gist. Your pricing. Now, psychology pricing is not a new thing. It's not something that's this is newfangled, you know, wow, look at this, you know. I'm sure you've been into a shop before and something like this would be $16.99, okay? And there's a reason they, they do that. It's because when you see something that's this price, you go, oh, and it's 17 pounds. And then when you when you see something and it's $16.99, in your brain, it's six, 16 pounds, even though it's only a penny less. But in your brain, you're thinking, ah, cheaper. And you'll see on Amazon and eBay and all those types of places, that's why they do this. And I would experiment with it in your shop. And I would put $16.99, things like that, and experiment with it. Um, don't, don't, obviously, anything I say in this shop critique, don't always just take my word for it. So yeah, don't always take my word for it. Make sure you test it for your shop. I'm just here to advise you. Um, and what's worked in my shop and to share that with you and what's worked in other shops and things like that. But try it out. I, I feel like your conversion rate would go up um, if you put 13.99 here, uh, things like that. So with your pricing as well, um, now I'm gonna go on to here. Mm -hmm. £2.50, right. I would 100% recommend that you um, take this, take your shipping costs, put it into this price here and have it as free shipping. There's a reason for this and the reason is this. So I'm a customer, I've just typed in wooden, ooh, pop off, I've just typed in wooden name plaque. I've got 4,810 results, which to be honest, I've done searches for things in the, in the past and it's been 110,675 re results. You know, it's been some ridiculous number. But 
I would 100% um, recommend that you do this and you do it with some other keywords and things that you've got. But there's a reason why this little box here is at the top. Now on the Etsy app, it's a lot more prominent. It's a lot more in your face. Um, and what this does is that this encourages people, they see it and they go, oh yeah, I'm up for a, bar a bargain. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna click that. It's the same with this here. This little free UK delivery badge, I think give it five years, and this is my prediction, feel free to um, you know, quote me. <laughs> Hang on, I'm just gonna take a little sip of water. But I think in five years time, um, this will be up here, and free UK delivery will be a really big deal. Now they've already said, Etsy have said this, that having free shipping will give you a slight bump in ranking. Now, I don't know how true that is. Um, obviously Etsy have said it, so it must be true, but I don't know how, um, how much it bumps you up. Um, I've always had free shipping on my items uh, for a couple of years now, so it didn't really apply much to me, but I did find that some of my competitors that didn't have free UK postage, their shops went down in the search. Um, not a lot, probably by, let's say they were here, probably gone boff, 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 probably gone to here or, or here rather instead. So, so not, not a ridiculous amount. But it's so difficult to kind of give you a, yes, this is what works, this is what doesn't work, especially when it comes to search and SEO, because it changes all the, all the time. Um, you could be watching this now and next month it could change. Um, keep your finger on the button. Um, I will give you any SEO updates and things as often as I can. Um, but yeah, I, I would always say, test, test, test. Um, I'm not an, an SEO expert, um, I don't claim to be, but I can just only share what's worked for my shop and definitely it's a case of testing it for your shop. But luckily it's very, very easy to do that because you copy a listing that you want to test it out on and you change just one thing in that listing, you keep it up for 30 days, 60 days and you see what happens. And it's quite interesting sometimes to, really see the changes that you know is 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 made and i will go into that in the seo section in a second so i've typed in wooden name plaque 4810 results i click that little button that takes out all of the shops that don't have free sh uk shipping see now that's 892 results so if you don't have free uk shipping you'll be cut out of that now regardless if your keywords match, all this sort of stuff, you'll be cut out. So I, it's only showing shops that are free UK delivery. And it's got this nice little green badge here, which, you know, to be honest, that, that does attract me. If I untick that, even in, a, even in a normal search, this attracts me more than this sort of blank space here. So really think about that um, when it comes to how your shop looks in search results. The same can be said as well for your on sale. So if I click that, it only shows uh, products that are on sale. Now, I, I, recommend, um, I recommend bumping up your prices to include shipping, and I would also see, so you've already got a sale, well, I, I don't know if it's classed as a sale or a coupon or what, but uh, where can I see, where can I see, where can I see? Illegible, it said illegible items get 25% off. Am I just not seeing it? Am I just not seeing it? Did I, did I click on the right one? Uh, illegible orders get 25% off. I want to see, I want to know. Okay. I don't know whether that's just Etsy being a bit funny at the minute. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, that's right down there. See, ideally you want that to be up here, wouldn't you, really? That's not anything you can do, Charlotte. It's just Etsy, I'm not, I'm not. This has all changed, literally, since last week when I was looking at Etsy shops. I swear that this bit has shimmied down or moved or something like that. But it does, it does just go to show that Etsy are testing things all the time. So you get 25% off when you spend £20 in this shop. Now, I had a question from a, uh, someone that I did a shop critique with, uh, Tim. 
And he said, okay, so I've reduced my prices to $14.99. I've, I've put the postage on that price as well. Da, da, da. Basically made it all, pr all pretty, all, all lovely. But when I run a 10% off sale, I, it goes back to an odd uh, pennies amount here. And I understand that. Um, the, the, the reason why I say that is because number one, one or the other may work for your shop. It might not be both, or it might be both. But at the end of the day, it's a heck of a lot easier to just switch the, the sale off than go through and edit your prices. And also, the secondary reason is, again, I, I always recommend, and I've said this in other videos, that as well as your Etsy shop, you have your own website. And the prices need to be the same on both. Don't, don't have this on your own website for, for £18 and then have it for £14.99 here with a 10% off sale. No, no, no. Make sure that your prices are all the same. And that's why I say to have the £14.99 or the psychology pricing um, on both and on Etsy run a sale because it's all about experimentation. You don't want the, um, the prices to be different and things like that. So I hope that makes sense. Um, as well, uh, Tim, if you're watching, uh, with the sales, when you've got eligible orders get 25% off, I believe that also includes you. Yes, so also include you if you have, a uh, I can't say that word today, eligible orders. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm not saying you have to run a 10% off sale like this all the time. I do, um, and I find that people are conditioned to expect a funny, number because obviously if you're going to a new look let's say and you're getting 25% off a top that's 14.99 it's going to be a bit of a iffy num number here and I think people are conditioned for it so don't worry too much about that the most important thing is is to put something on so you, obviously eligible orders you've you've got that on your uh, listings here and I think the most important thing is to just have something on there that people that you know, this little tiny little bit here, it does attract people and people go, oh, oh, okay. And then what they'll do, like what I've just done is go onto the listing, read up on it and see where they do get the 25% off and um, the sale and things like that. So Charlotte, I hope that helps you. I'm sorry, that was a really long winded way of trying to explain it. And Tim, if you're watching, I hope that's helped you as well. So with the SEO, now um, I think from what I've seen, you're not doing too badly on the SEO front, to be to be honest. I know you've probably got quite a long title and it's quite keyword stuff and things like that. I, I'm not going to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. My only thing that I will say to you is make sure that you accurately describe what it is that you are selling. So that's that's of obvious. But to also educate yourself as to how your target market searches for your items. So with this uh so i in fact i'm not going to go on that one i'm going to go on this one because i did just do that and i said to you that i would have typed in wooden name plaque to find it and i typed in uh wooden name plaque and it came up with items similar to yours so me being your target market in a first time buyer uh, want to decorate their home sense that is how i would be searching for that item and I don't think you've got it in here. Exact matches always rank a little bit better than if I was typing in layered name sign. Um, if if you had layered name sign here, comma, personalised name plaque, da, 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 that would rank over someone where they're just taking layered name sign and they're taking like random words. So there, 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 and making up a phrase, if that makes sense. Now, um, I would always say to tweak your SEO. What I do is that if listings expire, I leave them the full four months. They go into my expired listings folder. And I use that as like a little ready-made list of uh, listings that SEO aren't very good or listings that pictures aren't very good. And once, twice a month, I go through and I go through my expired listings and I look at them as a shopper. And I sit there and I say, okay, is it the picture? Is it the SEO? You know, what, what's, what's going on here? Is it something in my description that, you know, isn't, isn't working? Now, I've looked at your conversion rate, and your conversion rate is quite good. So it's 1.27%. 
which means for every 100 uh, people that go into your shop, 1.27% of them will buy. So one customer, one and a fifth customer <laughs> will, will buy. So I don't think it's your, it's anything that's turning your buyers off or anything like that. I think it may be just, just a case of just getting more people into your shop. I'm not sure. Um, maybe if you honed in on the, on the target market aspect and things like that, maybe it might tweak things. I think you just need to maybe just do some tweaking in general in your shop. But when it comes to SEO, um, you have to, the way you would search for this, which is, which is obviously up here, is different from the way I would search for this. And I think that is where a lot of shops go wrong. I, I personally don't think that, you know, SEO is a, is a really difficult thing on Etsy. I think Etsy makes it very easy. But my, my thing is that the way, because Etsy is a global website now, the way that someone in Mississippi searches for this plaque is gonna be different from you in the UK searching for this plaque. And the same with people in Spain, Italy, France, you know, wherever, um, it's different from how you would search for it. And I, 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 I would always say, don't obsess about the, um, the, the, the commas and the keywords and all, you know, just make sure that you accurately describe what it is that you're selling. Now, personally, I know Etsy have come out and said about the shorter titles. I tested it for three months in my shop. I found that the listings, in fact, I've just gone through uh, a couple of weeks ago and gone through my expired listings list and all of them that didn't sell once um, are ones with the shorter titles. Now, take from that what you will. Um, I would 100,000% recommend that you test it out for your shop. So copy this, put a shorter title in. Um, but what I, what I sort of say is to have uh, three longish tail keyword phrases and then maybe four and then leave it there. So when it comes to title length, I tend to sort of do that and I leave this for the tags. So it's a, it's a compromise, if you like, between the longer title, because as a, you know, the, the whole reason Etsy was saying about the longer title, well, sorry, the shorter titles, was because they want to make it easy to read for the customer. And I understand where they're coming from. I read this and think, oh, geez, like, okay, all right, let's, let's try and get an accurate, you know, idea of, of what it is down here. And, and, you know, which you do do. Um, but... I've had customers in the past where I've put silver necklace comma, lotus necklace comma, da 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 comma, and they've messaged me and they said, so do I get the chain and the necklaces or is it just, you know, because I've put lotus necklace, lotus pendant, silver necklace, uh, gift for yogi, um, yoga instructor gift, da da da, they've messaged me uber, uber confused saying, so do I get the actual pendant or is it the chain as well or is it just a necklace because obviously the pendant is different from the from a necklace sort of thing if that makes sense but it's just how people search it so accurately describing what it is and making sure that your titles aren't too confusing <coughs> excuse me hang on we should have a little sip of water making sure that your 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 titles aren't so confusing when customers are looking at them i think is a really good idea um, so again, my favorite, favorite, favorite way of finding keywords is two, two things. And this is actually what I use myself. Um, I do go, I do go a little bit more in depth, but I can do that in a separate video for you. Um, again, I'm not an SEO expert, so please don't, please don't take what I'm saying as rare and make sure you test it in your shop. So if I'm going wooden, uh, name plaque, I can't spell, there we go. Pinterest is fantastic. Pinterest is amazing. And if you're not on Pinterest, you should be. <laughs> Look at all of these uh, products which are similar to you. You know, you click on them and then you're off. You're, you're in their shop, you're buying that product. I, I love Pinterest. Pinterest is my social media uh, network of choice. I, I love it so, so much. So the beautiful thing about Pinterest is it gives you so like, a little beam of light coming from the clouds. It gives you all these fantastical keywords here. Now, I'm not saying go straight into your Etsy shop and just whack in these keywords and then Bob's your uncle, you're done. No, no. What this does is this also gives you a really, a really fantastic visual way of seeing how people search for things. So, wooden name plaque. 
DIY, well, that's not really what we're after. Wood signs, ah, wood signs. That's how people search, not just wooden name plaque or wooden signs, wood signs. Uh, boys, so they're obviously searching for like a boy's room. Unique, children, Etsy, well, that's a given product that again that's a given families house cribs weddings home handmade heart shop so you get an idea of you know wow okay so obviously wood signs wood name plaque and i would sort of be thinking right okay so they're obviously so let me just go back to you so they're obviously looking for you know children's name okay right so i'd be sat there if i were you and i'd be thinking okay so maybe i, I could type in wooden name plaque comma wood signs comma uh let's go back to pinterest um children's bedroom decor or children's um da, 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 pink signs something something like that I, it's very very quickly that i'm do, i'm doing this but it will take you some research and some things like that so yeah i i, I hope that helps you I'm also going to go on to E-Rank. Now, E-Rank have a free uh, plan. I'm on the paid plan. I love E-Rank. I will be uploading a video um, to do like a little review of E-Rank shortly. Wooden sign. Why I love E-Rank. Oh, I have, I have, I just love E-Rank so, so much. Apart from all there are other tools which you can see here. And obviously in that video that I've just mentioned, I'll go into detail with those. But... I type in wooden signs and um, it can, in fact, no, let's, let's, let's stick with the same search. So it's wooden name plaques. So it gives you how many Etsy searches a month, competition and Etsy engagement. Now this is going to load shortly, isn't it? Aren't you? Aren't you? There we go. <coughs> so. As you can see, wooden name plaques, uh, no data available, Etsy competition, just have a little sip of water again, guys, sorry. I think it's the pollen, I think it, it just gets everywhere, it gets in my eyes, nose, mouth, it just, it's horrible. I've taken tablets and it just doesn't touch it. Anyway, so, um, Etsy searches, Etsy competition, Etsy engagement. So you get a little bit of an insight into that particular keyword, it gives you average daily views, average weekly views, average charts. Personally, I look at this, but I don't take too much notice of this or this or anything like that. And I look at this, and the biggest thing is I look at this. This gives you similar keywords. Now look at all of these keywords that it's just given you. Amazing. But before you get excited and just like, and just take the top 12 and just wrap that in your listing, no, no. What I do is that I sort it by Etsy competition because now, let me let me just sort of explain why I do this. Is because if you're not an, like an established shop, when I say an established shop, I mean you've got 120,000 sales and your items rank number one all the time on page one. You are competing with thousands and thousands, probably millions now, <coughs> excuse me, of shops. And if you're just typing in girl's name gift or wooden sign or wood sign, that is a really saturated keyword, really, really, really. Um, and the likelihood of you ranking on page one long term is quite slim. So what I do is that I go onto Etsy competition and I look at this bar here, Etsy searches. So, aha, this is what we want. We want a lot of Etsy searches, not a lot of competition. So it's an untapped keyword. So that Lola, hang on. <coughs> I'm so sorry, Charlotte. I'm trying to power through. <laughs> so this, this here, which uh, I said about being like a like a desk name thingy, my Bob. Look, you have a perfect, perfect, perfect keyword, which is almost guaranteed to get you views because there's only three thousand one hundred and forty six products that are tagged with that keyword. But it's three between three thousand to four thousand Etsy searches. So and it's a very high rate. So, oh my goodness, definitely, definitely write that keyword down. And this is what I love. And I also do, sometimes I do go for these little guys here, there's zero to 50, because it just shows that there's a rise in popularity and not a lot of people are keyword in their listings as such. It's the same here, wood stickers, wooden, uh, wooden elephant, not really, you know, okay. Uh, last name, sign, wood. Okay, that's a bit of a strange way. But do you see what I mean? It gives you ways that people are searching for your products that you don't really know about. 
just going to double check, make sure I'm still going. Hour and 14 minutes. Oh, I'm so sorry, Charlotte. You must be gagging for a cup of tea by now. So, wedding plaque, um, that's okay. But you've got to make sure that it's not low engagement. Engagement means that people search for it but don't really click or heart or favourite any li any listings that come back, you know. Medium, maybe. Um, uh, very high is fantastic. High is good as well. Medium, evaluate that low. I maybe would just add as a tag if you really, really want to. Um... But yeah, uh, rustic name sign maybe, but as you can see, you start going up to the really high competition keywords. And if I typed in wood sign, you see, there's only 4,000 to 5,000 people searching it, but 50,000 results. So let me just take one of your keywords. There we go. Personalized name plaque. Let's whack that in there and see what that comes back with. I don't know if you use E-Rank, Charlotte, but I would definitely um, definitely recommend it and definitely have a look on Pinterest and stuff as well. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Are you going to load? You, you've not loaded, have you? Let's reload you. Sorry for this being so long, Charlotte. I know you've probably, you've probably sat there thinking that that's an hour and a half of my life gone, but I hope you get some uh, use out, out of this. Layered name plaque. So there's no data available for Etsy searches. It's got quite high competition and quite low Etsy engagement. So maybe that keyword isn't working for you, but it could be. Go into your Etsy stats and have a look at um, keywords that you're being found for. I think there's a beta test or a beta, beta, however you say it, test of this. And it literally shows you um, what keywords are bringing traffic to your shop. See if that's on there. Have a little investigate before you take it off. But again, name decorated, unicorn name sign. Um, E-Rank, e or it's not, it's, it used to be Etsy Rank, it's now E-Rank. So if I say Etsy Rank or E-Rank, they're both the same thing. E-Rank really gives you fantastic product ideas too. You know, it wouldn't take a lot, I, I would I would probably think, to maybe uh, pop it or make this uni unicorny in some way, make a new listing. Then you have a, uh, ta-da, unicorn name plaque. So yeah, obviously it's very, very, it's very low engagement, but you know, type that in. If you click that, it will take you to another keyword an analysis page and yeah. So, unicorn name sign again, uh, laser cut name sign. Uh, for some reason, that's that's going very well. So maybe pop that in your listing, see how it goes. Or, you know, if, if, if this listing is working well for you, copy it, don't just go in and change this one if it's working for you. Um, name door hanger, uh, house number plaque. See, that's another uh, potential product idea. Uh, address plaque, again. Good, good idea. Engraved plaque, pet name, don't know what pet name tag's got to do with it. Uh, door plaques, last name sign, name plaques. So you get an idea of the kind of thing I mean. Sorry Charlotte, I, ha I had to sneeze and I could feel it coming. I did not want to uh, deafen the earphone users that are here. So I thought, okay, let me just sneeze off, off camera. So, <laughs> um, my golden rules for SEO, don't change anything that's working for you. Don't change them every week. It usually takes between 30 to 60 days for your changes to be found in the Etsy search and things like that. But definitely, definitely, definitely don't change uh, listings that are performing well. As well as Pinterest and Etsy rank as well, you can go on to here, say wood name sign, and you can get an idea of, you know, what's working for you up here. So again, the uh, Etsy search bar is a fantastic tool. Um, if I type in wood, wood sign, it comes up, wood sign custom, wood signs personalized, wood sign wedding gift, wood sign, blah, blah, blah. so yeah, you can start typing in a search and it auto popularizes um, all of these things here. So again, this is a fantastic keyword tool. And this is actually what people are searching for on Etsy. So another win. Delivery times. Right, let's pop onto here then. Two to three weeks, okay. Now, this might be a bit of a con controversial view, and I know that you work as well, Charlotte, and I know a lot of Etsy shop owners out there, and, and, and this is a side hustle, and they work really hard on, on, the, on, on the side of it <laughs> as well. But with gifts, 
So if you're keywording or anything like that, or you're making your items as gifts, I can tell you, I don't ever shop more than probably a week before the gift is due. Um, that's my bad. <laughs> But I do find that a lot of people that I know as well, they 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 do the same thing. They don't necessarily shop um, two to three weeks before, unless it's Christmas, in which case it's you know it's like a, it's a well well known thing. Christmas comes at the same time every year, so people have a chance. But if it's someone's birthday, for me it's usually a oh no, it's such and such's birthday next week. Oh, I'll go on to Etsy and I'll see what I can find, and. I have to say, if I saw that, I'd be like, oh no, it won't come in time. I'm gonna give you the estimated delivery date now, which I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with, really. But yeah, it's, it's and then it says, hey, need it by a specific date, contact the seller. But the chances are that people are lazy. They, they, they probably won't click that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's, yeah, it's difficult to, you know, you have to think of yourself as a shopper and kind of think about it and, and, you know think about yourself you know how often in, in advance do you shop for gifts you know are you someone that that writes all all your friends' birthdays in a book and you know shops months 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 in advance or are you the type of person that goes in a week be, a week beforehand and goes oh my goodness i have to you know find a gift so yeah it's it's really difficult um so yeah i if if you can um i would batch create like the back blocks and thing and things like that. I don't know how, how you make your products and things like that. They look amazing. Uh, you put a lot of work and effort into them. Um, just maybe batch create as much as you can beforehand so you can decrease this date here. Um, you know, a, a week or two, e even if you reduced it by a week or even a few days. Um, yeah, it it's, it would definitely help, I think, your conversion rate because I must say that is the only thing with Etsy is that, you know, I sometimes, if I need a gift fast, I sometimes completely bypass it because I, you know, I know that the items are going to take longer to make um, and I sell on Etsy. So if I, if I think, think like that, I think probably a lot of others would, would think, would think like that as well. Um, maybe as well, you can offer like a rush fee um, to get their item out as soon as you can. Um, I don't personally do this myself because my uh, just my date is I think one to three working days. So but that's because I've organised everything. I batch created everything. I, I batch create chains in, in advance, clasped in advance, all that sort of stuff. Organise everything. So I literally, I just it's a very easy process for me unless it's a custom order, in which case it does take a good week or two. Um, but yeah, I, I, I hope that sort of helps. Um, essentially you need to make sure that your that the the journey of a customer from when they come into your shop to when they buy from your shop is seamless um so everything goes smoothly all that type of thing the other sort of uh, note i've got down here is on the back end of your shop when someone buys something from you are you sending them sending them <laughs> are you sending them it's my uh, nose it's, it's a bit blocked sorry guys are you sending them a nice little message afterwards? So are you sort of saying to them, um, oh, hey, thank you for your order, yada, yada, yada. Um, I'm so grateful for your order, all that kind of thing. It will be with you between this day and that day, da, 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 or this date and that day, or one to two weeks, or two to three weeks. Um, basically, you have to be reassuring the customer straight from when they come into your listing to when they buy. And yeah, just a little something like that just makes the experience a lot better. Right, I think I've talked enough about your listings as a whole. I'm gonna go back to your shop and we're gonna to go to your about page. Okay, so please, please, please don't put product images in your about page. I, I know about your product images um, because I'm, I'm looking in your shop, um, but I want to know about you. I want to see your workspace. I want to see how you store your uh, tools, what your tools are, where you, you know. If you can get someone to take a picture of you, like for physically making your items, um, get a friend to take a picture of you, cutting out the wood, painting, whatever. Um, 
that that adds value now the difference between you know you 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 might have questioned yourself in the past and said you know what's the difference between me and you know a big box store that sells wooden signs well the difference is is that um people want to know about you they're buying into you and your story the more you put in here so i would definitely like probably double or triple the size of this um you know, I want to see you, you, you told me in your questionnaire why you started them. And it was because of your grandmother and that, and that was her name. I, I would put that in there, you know, um, maybe talk about if this is true that you and your mum and dad used to make wooden bits and bobs in your dad's shed or something like that. Or, you know, I want to know the, history I want to know what your plans are you know I want to know everything you know if I'm drawn into your brand in your shop here I want to scroll down and be like oh, I want to know all about this shop oh okay and if I all I'm met with is some more product pictures I'm going to be a bit like oh okay and then this and think okay all right all right okay cool and but I wouldn't be drawn into it I'd probably favour this shop and go okay I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I, I like the products um, I'm gonna go and see what else and if there's another shop that sells a similar product to you that you go into and you know uh, their about section is a lot more detailed you know you might end up buying into that story a lot more than your own and then you know that shop has got the sale over you it's not always about the quality of the product even though it should be but it's not always about just the quality of the products and um, prices and, and where you are in the world and all that type of thing. A lot of the time, it's purely just uh, people have read your about section. So here, definitely put uh, pictures of how you store your items, uh, your paints, your workspace, how you cut your you know your tools and things like that. So please just make sure that you give people a behind the scenes look. Uh, bonus points if you put a video in here as well because people love to watch video right so we are on the home stretch um, I'm going to look at you I've already got your Instagram I'm going to look at your socials so you have only got Pinterest and Facebook I can only imagine that you're not on in on Pinterest oh sister you need to get on Pinterest you definitely 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 need to get on Pinterest now and my husband can pop, pop off for a moment um so you you have a facebook group now i i understand probably why you said i've got multiple groups and they are amazing however i do believe that you would probably it would probably be in your best interest to get a facebook page the only reason being is that my understanding of it is a Facebook page is like a landing page for your brand, for your business, okay? So that's different from a group. A Facebook page is like your home page for your, for your brand. So it's where people, where they're pretty much low key stalking you. They can go onto your brand page. Everything's on there. You can have a little read through, get a feel for the brand, comment, like, da, da, da. a group is where you physically join and you become a member. Groups are, I've got a VIP member group and it's for people that are, have bought from me before, they're fans of my brand and I run like live sales and things in like that in that group. Love my group, it's fantastic, but my page has got 21,000 likes, my group has got 700 members. So it's a lot of a smaller niche uh, amount of customers or fans in my group but my page is where you know it's all happening um my page is is is, is the hub if you like so a hundred percent recommend making a page over making a group i would if i was you i would make this a private group and i would have it as like because i can see you're doing market nights and things, nights and things like that so yeah if that's working out for you if you're brave enough to go on camera, you can run live sales, which means you basically, you sit at, at, at your desk and you say, oh, hey, I have this new thing here and, and you show it and you talk about it and how you made it. And you say, right, I've only got two of these. Uh, the first people to comment yes below will get an invoice sent and uh, yeah. And that's how you make sales on Facebook. I mean, and obviously that's not the only way, there's lots of other ways. That, that, that's how I make sales on Facebook. 
Um, but if you have a, a business page, you can funnel people that come and visit your page into your group, get them to join, and then you've literally, you've, you've essentially got like an email list, if you like, but on Facebook of people who are interested in your brand that you can market to and things, things like that. Um, Facebook page, I wouldn't recommend always just posting products. Again, if you know your target market, you can post funny memes and videos and funny pictures and things like that. So uh, that's just a really, really quick run through with social media. Just revisit it. Definitely take a look at Pinterest if you can. Da -da -da -da. Instagram. I like Instagram. I, know, I never used to. I've learned more about it in the last few months. Um, yeah, fantastic. How often are you posting? Four hours ago, lovely. Four hours ago, oh, you are posting a lot, aren't you? 20 hours ago, you are on it, girl. You are on it. One day ago, four days ago, six days ago. Yeah, you are posting reg regularly, which is nice to see. How long have you been on? Oh yeah, you've been on there for a while, haven't you? I do like Meet the Maker posts. They do get a lot more engagement, I find, than, um, and, you know, you, you can see here, it's getting a lot more engagement than just your products, which is lovely. Um, with hashtags, are you differing your hashtags every time? So you've only got a couple of hashtags there. I use this site here, Instavast, to get uh, hashtag ideas. So let's say you've got your name plaque there. Um, name plaque, obviously type it, oh, I mean, I don't think name plaque is a very good one, let's have a little, no, not Pandora, let's go on to here, uh, hashtag room decor, because that's what that is, isn't it, you put it, you put it on your wall, um, and yeah, so hashtag room decor, what this little tool does, it gives you lots of other, like, keyword ideas, 100% recommend keeping under 200,000 posts because your your post will get lost. You know, if you type it in here, living room decor, 1,952, you know, your post will probably be on the top page for 30 seconds and then it will just go shroom and it will just be sucked into the uh, Etsy, Etsy, Insta ether. Um, but yeah, have a little look. Um, only use hashtags that apply to you. But yeah, this, this gives you some amazing hashtag ideas and make sure that you hashtag your pictures, you know, a lot more um, than, than, than a couple. Uh, you've got four there. Um, yeah, you've got a few more there. But yeah, I um, yeah, I, I think you get a lot more followers in if you just um, put some more hashtags in your posts. So the last section, I'm so sorry. I mean, how long have we been going for? An hour and a half, okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, product ideas. Now, obviously, we, we talked a lot about target market before. Um, now, I will give you some product ideas. Uh, it's just some, Sometimes it's just handy for someone with fresh eyes to come into it and sort of give you ideas and bits and bobs like that. Feel free to tell me to stuff them, <laughs> because at the end of the day, this is your shop. You do what you want with your shop. I'm just here to sort of say, oh, hey, have you thought about this, or this, this and this? So, um, I said before about the garlands, so the name garlands and the and the modern day bunting and things like that. That's that's amazing. Definitely with the desk plaques and things like that. Um, definitely maybe do more boys decor because when we went back when we went onto Pinterest, we found that that was quite a good keyword. Um, so maybe do like this sign in blue and uh, white or blue and gold or some, something like that. Maybe do a little bit of research as to the boys colors. Um, with your target market, now it's really hard for me to kind of give you product ideas because you might decide to go into the nursery decor aspect of things and, and maybe not, not carry on with like desk plaques and things like that. It's completely up to you. Um, I would again, I, I like this, this uh, plaque. I think that's really, really cute. Um, I also like the Christmas bits and bobs as well. Um, um, home decor might be one to go for. I would probably like do uh, an address plaques. So like when people buy their first home, they can have like a little plaque made saying uh, number one church lane um, and then put the date underneath when they moved in. So when they move on to a different house, 
in the future they always have that little plaque to commemorate the first time they moved into the home same with first christmases and things like that you can even do frames with that in as well um pen pots is good too if you want to develop that some more that would be fantastic um i really like these rainbow uh bits and bobs here i think they make fantastic nursery decor definitely uh, do like a actual rainbow of 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 those um that's it so like that there maybe do like a slightly brighter one things like that put names and things on it as well um yeah i think just i think i can't really give you too many product product ideas because your your niche can can make so many different product ideas and i'd be here for days sort of going through it but before i do i think it's the best idea for you to narrow down your target market um I think that would really, really benefit you if you know exactly what it is that you want to sell in, you know, long term. And you said to me that you would really like to have a, um, a physical store one day. Well, what what do you envision your physical store selling and things like that? I'm just going to take a visit back to the shops that we've sort of had a look at and thought, OK, well, they're similar to you. I love the pastels here. They've gone very heavily into, um, so you, you can see 10 people, 10 people have this in their basket, nine people have this in their basket. So they must be getting a lot of views and things like that. So definitely have a little uh, look at their listings and see what you like, you know, take notes as to what you like about their listings compared to yours. Um, pastel colors and they're definitely focusing on nursery decor and things like that. The same here, I do like these little guys, they're, they're really, really cute. Um, they haven't got a lot of items in their shop and things like that, but yeah. Um, again, go through, have a look, see what you think. And the same here. Um, yeah, so like here as well. But do you see what I mean about the free UK delivery badge? It does make, it does make you... Sorry about that, Charlotte. Um, that was my mum on the phone and I had to sort of, I, I wasn't entirely sure how to uh, talk to my mum without it going through the microphone. So <laughs> I had to sit there for a minute and think, right, how do I do this? So yeah, just go into other pe other uh, com com competitors shops and other people's shops and sort of, you know, highlight what you what you like about their shop um, and yeah, sort of get a accurate rep representation um, and see what you like. So. Charlotte, I'm sorry that went on for, for so long. I do hope it helped you. Um, yeah, I, I love you guys so, so much for all of you that are watching at home now. Um, and yeah, Charlotte, I hope that helped you. If you, had any, if you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to message me or pop them in the comments below. Sorry, it was a bit of a stop, start, stop, start. Um, we are exchanging the contracts on our house today. So as you can imagine, it was like message here, phone call here, then it was the dog barking, then it was my hay fever. So apologies for the stop, stop, start, stop, start, but I, I hope that brought you some value. Um, yeah, and fantastic. And I, I, honestly, I do really, really love your shop. I do feel like you will be going full time with this. Um, you just need to put a little bit of uh, thinking into it, do a little bit of research and things like that. So I hope you have a wonderful day, guys, and I will see you soon. Bye.